Hello, chat friends, and welcome to the Out of Test channel, and welcome to a very, very special game that I've prepared for you today. It's a great game played by the new Stockfish version, by the new Stockfish 14 against Rofhade, and we have today the King's Gambit on the board. So far, we have covered great games by Stockfish 14 in the Evans Gambit. We have seen also a great game in the Scotch Gambit. We have also seen a great game in the Fried Liver Attack, which was really incredible, and it's really beautiful to see Stockfish playing uh, this old, uh, old Gambit, this old uh, sharp, uh, sharp opening lines. And as I said today, we have the King's gambit on the board which is really really wild let's see now how stockwich will handle this brutal brutal opening be prepared this is again a brilliant tactical game which has tactics really all over the board so let's check out now the game so here e4 played by stockfish we have e5 by rofada we have f4 uh the king's gambit is on the board and here rofada accepts the challenge with the move e takes f4 we have the move knight to f3 we have now g5 which is i think the most normal and the most aggressive way here to play for black black is trying to cement the position further with moves this h6 then maybe with the move f f6 so here uh black is trying to keep the position on the king side compact and is trying to maybe secure the king by calcium but it's really really hard sometimes because what white has gained here after move e takes f4 is always this pawn central control these two pawns are very very annoying in the center because when white pushes the pawn on d4 then of course white is controlling this four squares on the other side of the board so that's why white has sort of a space advantage in the, in the center but of course black is up a pawn and can also push uh, here on the king side with moves as g4 uh, in the continuation we have now bishop to c4 uh, by by stockfish one of the main ideas of this move bishop to c4 is uh, to even to play the move knight to e5 and then further uh, challenge the weak f7 square that's i think the main issue for black black uh, could lose sometimes the tactical battle around the square f7 that's actually the main target of white in the continuation now we have the move bishop to g7 and now comes this idea uh, d4 if you play uh, here in the continuation knight to c6 was played but if you play now the move g4 uh, immediately then i think uh, white can go into a very very sharp line which we have analyzed also uh in in our top uh, top engine series uh white can go into this line can sacrifice the piece after move bishop to f4 okay uh black can take g takes f3 queen to f3 will happen and there are now really some uh, very very nasty discoveries with even uh, somehow to open the f file and to deliver checkmate on f7 so you see black can never really never take out also this pawn because you risk some ideas like this bishop to e5 with the direct attack against the bishop but also with the uh, double attack here on f7 with this checkmate threat uh, against black's king so as i said uh this of course so black doesn't have to play the position like this of course after move g takes uh bishop to f4 and g takes f3 queen to f3 there are now different ways to proceed here for black black ha can defend its position but still i kind of like this uh, position of white with these two sharp bishops uh, here all over the board with this pawn central control with the activity here of the on the f file with a uh, rook to f1 ideas then of course black has to be careful here and as i said we have analyzed one game in this particular line so maybe you can also check it out see different ideas for black for white and maybe uh, search for other tactical pos possibilities for both sides so as i said uh, this wasn't played in the game after move d4 here rofhada tried to move knight to c6 so didn't play the move g4 stock which plays now the move h4 which is i think one of the provocative ideas uh, in the king's gambit what uh, Bla white is hoping for is this move g4 and when that happens then of course this f4 is week because uh, here in the continuation h6 was played again if you try now here the move g4 you see then you risk this one knight to g5 will happen and then we're attacking of course this f7 as i said the f7 square is the main issue for black black would be forced now to play the move knight to h6 but now it's time really to play the move bishop to f4 and you see now uh white has gained this pawn central control has a very nice activity with all of the pieces so you see this g4 pushing the g4 so far is not a good idea for black so after move um as we said d4 knight to c6 h4 h6 was played now knight to c3 normal development and here d6 played by rofada again you see now even after the move h6 even if you try now g4 again now the game becomes really really wild and i want you to memorize this uh maybe this line this is a very very sharp line that you should be really familiar if you want to play the king's gambit from white's perspective then you have this move knight to e5 okay we have the knight takes e5 d takes e5 and now if black takes bishop to e5 then comes the 
standard bishop to f7 it's a great great tactic that i think you should be really familiar as i said because now after king to f7 we have now queen to d5 black can maybe protect the position with the move king to uh, king to f6 but now bishop to f4 is a great great move here after bishop to f4 now we can castle and black is simply tactical loss even if uh, here in this position after the move bishop to f4 bishop to c3 happens it's not even better because we can still take b take c3 and still black is in really really big trouble here because bishop to e5 will happen also kingside castling again with the activity of the rook here on the f file is simply as i said too much to handle here here for black so really wild stuff uh, that's as i said after this move after move knight to g uh, after move g4 then knight to e5 is a possibility because as we said black cannot take the centralized pawn because of this tactic bishop to f7 and then queen to d5 so really wild stuff so uh, knight to c3 as i said normal ideas and here rook hadet tried normal development with the move d6 here we have queen to d3 by um by stockfish we have now king to f8 again if you try g4 i'm analyzing always this move g4 because it seems to me that black should maybe try in one particular moment this move after move g4 again i don't think that black is gaining so much knight to g1 okay white has to retreat but now after move knight to d4 again white can take out this centralized pawn on f4 after move knight to e7 maybe knight to e2 could be a possibility or i think even queen side castling is perfectly fine because black still has trouble to castle somewhere even if you castle on the king side the pawn structure in the uh, in front of the king is already weakened so i think in the continuation of the game white would always find a great way to attack this position although the engine gives here slight advantage for black black has defended the position so far very very good but still in my opinion uh, the files are open the diagonals are opened uh, with the peace activity i think as i said that white would find always a great way how attack uh how to attack black now in the continuation of the game so after move queen to d3 again rof is not playing the move g4 i think we have solved now the positional problems with this move because in my opinion as i said it should be really more and more analyzed because this move g4 comes always as a threat theoretical motif here for black so as i said i wanted to analyze it i wanted to see what will happen in every particular move if uh, black is playing that so that's that's why as i said even in this position i think that the g4 is not bringing so much uh here for black so here king to f8 uh played by Rofhade, a risky choice maybe to get the king like this but still black has a compact position you see now black is trying maybe even to play the move f6 maybe uh, cement the position further or maybe even try bishop to e6 uh to bishop to e6 as a long-term plan not immediately because d5 could happen but i think what you want to do here is to get rid of this very very annoying bishop on c4 that you can do with move bishop to e6 or maybe with ideas of knight to a5 and here the continuation we have now knight to e2 played by uh, stockfish we have knight to a5 here rofhad is trying as we said to challenge the bishop but now again sort of a provocative move by uh, stockfish 14 because after move bishop to d5 uh here rofhad tried now the move c6 and hoped for this scenario of course after move bishop to b3 then to play knight takes b3 and maybe after after a takes b3 finally oh, black would get rid of this very very annoying bishop but stockfish had a different tactic in mind stockfish played now from this one uh, from this point on a brilliant brilliant tactical game here stockfish decides to play the move bishop to f7 sacrificing the bishop immediately so after move king to f7 now you see the problems we have now the move b4 the, with the move b4 you see the knight gets trapped the knight doesn't have good squares so here d5 uh play by um and i think okay white still can proceed here with uh, b takes uh, b takes a5 taking out the pawn maybe this one could happen uh, d takes e4 knight to, uh, queen to e4 and i think again white is dominant here because still we have opportunities to play bishop to a3 to activate this piece i think the king is more and more in danger although as i said the engine gives here equal chances for both sides but i still kind of would like to be more white here because of the centralized queen because of this knight centralized knights i think as i said that again white would find great ways to attack black skin now in the continuation of the game but here stockfish played after move d5 really a brilliant move plays first to move uh, h takes g5 uh, so stockfish doesn't take here uh, the knight immediately and allows basically here uh, black to cement the knight on c4 but now let's see what happens if you play knight to c4 immediately then you get this one this is the main uh, positional problem i think for black here although black is now up the whole piece and the knight is back here the knight is cemented with the move bishop to f4 black is really really in serious trouble because you have to now retreat uh here after move like uh maybe here the uh, uh, g takes h6 okay black could maybe try here d takes e4 but now with queen to e4 you see the game is simply lost so you cannot do that so maybe you could try here knight to h6 but now castling is 
actually also a great choice again you don't have time to take out this one because you can simply queen to e4 and again you see with the activity uh, of this rook on the e and uh, f file again black is simply tactical loss although black is up a whole piece but as we said uh, the files are open the diagonals are open in front of black's king so again in my opinion black is really really tactical loss so even if it's right here in this particular position uh, here after move um, h takes g5 even if you try to do it like this if you stay with your knight here if you don't want to play the move knight to c4 again it's not so much better rook to h8 will happen then bishop to h8 and now with the move e5 uh, black can really really be challenged here in the center now you could maybe try knight to c4 but again queen to h6 h7 will happen and i think again with the activity of this knight again uh, black is in really really serious trouble you could maybe cover but now queen to h5 is happening we can take out now this one knight takes g5 is also a very nice idea now knight to h7 will happen knight to f4 will happen uh, or bishop to f4 even queenside castle with rook to f1 is now an opportunity again i'm pointing out although black is up a whole piece but still this is a very very dangerous position uh here for black really wild stuff as i said uh although uh black has find found a way to cement the knight on c4 you cannot activate your pieces the pieces are really sort of on, on natural position the king is still in danger so it's really a beautiful game now for for white so as i said after hx g5 here in the continuation we have now d takes e4 that was now rafada's choice it tries to now centralize uh, more pieces after move with uh, d takes e4 here stockfish plays now brilliant move g6 uh if you take of course then of course you get queen to uh, e4 it comes with the check so that's why here rafada retreated to uh, to ethic but now after move queen to e4 knight to c4 and it seems so that maybe something went wrong here for stockfish because again this knight is in in the game uh, black uh, found a great great way how to defend the knight how to stay with an extra piece in the game but here again stockfish had a brilliant idea uh castling here played by stockfish 14 because not that this move is only securing the king stockfish never plays a move just in order to maybe create one idea in chess stockfish always plays moves that are creating maybe five six ideas immediately because after move casting you we can notice now that the rook is on the same file like the king and so far uh, what we want to do now uh, we want to somehow maybe take out this pawn which will be taken this is not a um, not a hard hard mission to, for white to do because this is a really long-term weakness and then if the f file gets open way me we can try to, uh, try to create some discoveries against black's king so so far black doesn't have also uh, good opportunities to defend the king here in the continuation of course what you should do do uh, here um sort of how to try to simplify the game by trading off the queens but again queen to d3 stock which is not allowing this scenario we have now knight to e3 and now a brilliant again a beautiful move here by stockfish we have now knight takes f4 knight to f1 and now b5 b5 is really a wild move uh, because now the serious threat is this move bishop to a3 uh, also trapping the queen so that's why stockfish didn't take out immediately here the, uh, the knight on f1 uh, played now this opening move b5 and now the serious threat is of course bishop to a3 so that's why c5 uh, played by rofada but now stockfish takes uh, here bishop to f5 was played if you try now bishop to g4 uh, then again the game becomes really really wild we can play bishop to d2 even if you take bishop to f3 queen to f3 and again you see maybe black could try this one but again the tactical threats on the f file are simply too much to handle then uh, king to f1 will happen maybe you can try to take out uh, here the rook on a1 but then you get again knight to d5 it comes with the, the, the double attack the attack against the queen but also with this uh, check on the f file so again black will lose the queen and probably uh, the game so as i said this was the possible continuation after move bishop to g4 uh here if you try bishop to d4 immediately uh it's not again so good because you get simply knight to d4 uh, c takes d4 and again the discover attack is simply too much to handle it's here a uh, black has to resign the position immediately so these are the main tactics uh, i'm showing you this because this is now very important to recognize uh in the continuation of the game so after move uh, queen to f5 we have now bishop to f5 here uh Rofkade is trying to cover also somehow the f file a little bit further in the continuation of the game and is also trying to develop a further a minor piece queen to c4 uh played by stockfish 14 we have bishop to g4 again this idea to attack the knight but now bishop to a3 again with the serious threat to play simply bishop to c5 here in the continuation queen to e3 after king to f1 stockfish sacrifices now another piece but now with rook to f1 
finally this rook comes into the uh, into the game and now two pieces are on the fl the king and the queen and now you cannot do basically much against this move knight to e5 or some other discoveries uh in one particular moment black is simply a tactical loss so here king to e8 but again knight to um uh, knight to f uh, knight to e5 also with threats of queen to f7 here it's also weak squares so in the continuation uh in uh sort of how to try queen to f1 even if you try queen to e4 to stay with your queen maybe on uh, in the game it's not so good that we said queen to f7 will happen you can maybe try king to d8 but now queen to g7 wins the game immediately now uh, we can again try some checks uh, bishop to c5 is an opportunity rook to f8 simply too much tactical possibilities for white black is as i said tactical loss so really really wild stuff so i have to move knight to e5 for the right now queen to f1 we have queen takes f1 bishop to e6 and now knight to f7 attacking the rook we have knight to e7 and here stockfish simply takes out now this weak pawn on c5 we have rook to c8 here stockfish takes out the rook we have bishop to h8 now queen to e1 uh creating a double attack here uh, on the a file also against the bishop but also against the knight so that's why bishop to uh, d4 had to be played we have bishop to d4 and now king to d7 and we can notice now of course stockfish has the queen for rook and the knight and still this uh, pass pawn which is i think very very important if maybe the game would be uh, only with these pieces maybe with the queen and the bishop against the rook or knight and the bishop then maybe this could be a drawish position but with the pawns on the board of course white is always opportunities to push the pawn further so here in the continuation we have g7 immediately by stockfish b6 uh, bishop to f6 attacking the knight we have knight to g8 queen to d1 a check we have king to e8 and now bishop to b2 retreating but still also protecting um, the g7 square here we have knight to e7 we have now a4 knight to d5 queen to d4 we have uh, king to e7 and now c4 of course kicking away the knight we were we're trying now to get the queen here on f6 in the continuation we have knight to c7 now bishop to a3 we have king to f7 now queen to f4 again a check also attacking the h6 pawn we have king to g uh, king to g6 uh, bishop to b2 again with ideas to play uh here uh, queen to f6 in the continuation we have a rook to e8 now queen to f6 is happening king to h7 and now after move queen to f8 in this position uh in this position uh Rofhada resigned so really will well stop even if you take as rook to f8 then we simply promote another queen and it's simply game over so brilliant brilliant game played by stockfish so you see the king's gambit is such an unexplored opening this is really wild still it can be played maybe in this top top engine levels especially when stockfish is playing we have seen now some other opportunities for white and for black and still in my opinion you should try to avoid it if you maybe a gambit player maybe you should try the evans gambit or maybe this danish gambit or uh, maybe the scotch gambit that we have seen in my opinion these are also sharp openings but the king's gambit is still such a risky opening you said we have seen also some uh, counter attack opportunities here for black so in my opinion it, the game becomes really too tactical for my taste i couldn't really it's really even hard to analyze this game with an engine at home because there are so many uh, sidelines of particular tactics so uh, the game becomes really really well so okay i hope that you enjoyed this game interesting stuff in the king's gambit uh, again a blurring game played by stockfish 14 if you want to see more brutal attacks like this check out my comment to chess games the best chess games played by top engines here's the link of our playlist and if you want to see humans battling it out in their best chess games check out my best chess games of all time series with some great games from the past and if you want to maybe watch more king's gambit games here's also a playlist that i've created for you the king's gambit games uh, there with some other great games by stockfish and some other top engines and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course